gardening can be a rewarding and beautifying experience for our home and community. However, how we care for our garden and what we choose to plant can have a huge effect on the world around us. A good pollinator garden will have flowers right from the beginning of spring right into the end of fall. Different plants flower at different times in a good garden, no matter if it's a pollinator garden or not, will have bloom times that spread throughout the season with really no downtime in regards to that. Um, so the, the color and the time of bloom is important. The different types of flowers, large flowers, small flowers, different types of flower structures are also important. So having, you know, your big, beautiful bergamots as like a little landing pad from bumblebees, but then, you know, you have plants like hoary vervain that have a very, very tiny flower, but little tiny solitary bees prefer those over the bergamot. So flowering time, flowering structure, and flowering color are all important elements of a pollinator garden. Uh, also though, ensuring that you have plants that are tall and plants that are short to provide habitat for the, the pollinators that live and thrive on the ground and having plants in your garden that thrive off those ground pollinators as well. So that connects to flowering time as well. So those are the, the really good elements of a pollinator garden. A pollinator garden is a garden that contains plants particularly attracted to local pollinators. This will shift and change depending on where you live. While pollinator gardens can be any size or shape, they need to be free from pesticides and chemicals and be located in a space that pollinators can easily access. So pollinators um, are actually a, a very wide range of little animals and they can be anything from bees and wasps uh, all the way up to hummingbirds and bats depending on the location and, uh, and, and the, the habitat that, that they're in. So a pollinator is, um, can be living or non-living. Uh, that's something that's really important. A lot of people forget that uh, wind itself is actually a pollinator for a lot of different plant species, including trees, shrubs, uh, and certain flowers. So very simply put, wind is a great mechanism of making or of having pollen transfer from one flower to another. Um, so, and that's really what the role of a pollinator is. It's to bring the pollen from one plant and deposit it in the appropriate location on another plant to create, um, in, in most cases, to create a seed. Choosing plant species native to your area is important as native plants exist as a part of a naturally forming environment and promote local ecosystems. Native plants provide food, shelter, and nest materials that animals, birds, insects, and amphibians know how to use in a natural way. With a variety of plants in a, in a garden or any site, then you also attract a variety of pollinators. So in our particular site at Lakeshore, the pollinators that would be attracted would be various species of bees, flies, butterflies, wasps, moths, and beetles, who are all pollinating on, uh, on those plants. So when we're looking at um, our, um, our pollinator species, when we look at wild bees, for example, carpenter bees, um, uh, orchard bees or mason bees, bumblebees, um, you know, honeybees as well, but our metallic sweat bees, those are things that are some, some of the different names of some of our wild bees that you'll find throughout Etobicoke. Uh, the main ones being, like I said, I like to kind of give examples of things that people are used to. So bumblebee would be a great one, but when we look at butterflies, monarchs, um, the yellow or black swallowtail uh, butterfly, White admirals, these are um, common sulfurs, are all types of butterflies that we see uh, within the South Etobicoke area. But don't forget, wind is one, bats can be pollinators, and different bird species can be pollinators. Yeah, it's, pollinators are interesting because some of them can be very specific about the plants that they pollinate. One of the plants uh, that requires some specific, well, two, a few of the plants that require a specific pollinator. One of them is tomatoes. 
Many people think about pollinators as honeybees, but in fact, tomatoes are pollinated specifically by bumblebees. The other plant that we have in the garden uh, that is, has a specific pollinator is the squash. And squash is interesting. There are uh, very specific squash bees. And because squash is an interesting plant, it produces two types of flowers. One type of flower ha has the pollen and the other type of flower actually receives the pollen and creates the actual fruit that, or, or the vegetable that we know as squash. So there are specific bees that actually know how to transfer the pollen from one type of flower to the other. Pollinators and native plants are an important part of maintaining the health of our local ecosystems. The Gardens Lakeshore supports pollinator gardens. 